you're brand new to lambdas, check out my previous video. A little link will pop up and it's in the description. It's an intro and this is a little follow on like part two of that video. OK, I want to talk about optional inputs, being able to copy paste your formulas and also setting up a default template containing all your lambdas. OK, let's go. OK, so here's sort of where we left off in the last video. We built this divide lambda, which allowed you to divide by zero. But I said, you know, if it does divide by zero, this is your option. That's what gets output. But I'd like to give them an alternative. You know, somebody could put in, I want it to show zero or missing or whatever, you know, or error. So here we go. I'm just going to add square bracket underscore alternative. OK, so I've defined that and the square brackets is the thing here that makes it optional. It means the, the user doesn't have to put in that parameter. The other ones are required and the formula won't work. So that's the that's the part. Right. And then down here, I could nudge this down and I could do another little if. And here's a nice little function is omitted. So if is omitted the alternative. So if they don't enter anything, comma, all right, then I want to put that bit of text in. OK, let me just nudge this up. So otherwise, I want them to actually, you know, what is the alternative that they've suggested? OK, shift enter, close the bracket. All right, so that's another little option. I've got to put a comma there. And this should work. Just save that to the workbook. So if I go back to where we were yesterday and I say special divide, OK, here we go, equals special. See, now there's an alternative over here. So I could do this, comma, this. OK, that works. But I could say an alternative, which would be uh, zero. Yeah, or blank or whatever. So that's how you do an alternative option. It's all about the square brackets. And if you were creating a brand new one, so you just wanted to, okay, and it's asking for arguments, you'll see there the little Z has got square brackets around it. So you could say, you know, there's argument A, comma, and then argument B, comma, but argument C, And that's optional. OK, and then you write your function down here. So there we go. All right, next little tip. When you copy this formula, OK, this special dot divide or whatever function you've got, if I copy that to another sheet, let's go a totally new sheet and just paste that formula in, the formula still works. OK, and what has happened, if I go to formulas name manager, the special divide function now lives in this workbook. So there's the lambda down there. So you can just easily copy paste. OK, but what about if you want to have all your lambdas living in a in a master file? Well, that's where I tend to go to file and then options. Go to advanced and under advanced, there's a little default folder path. OK, you've got to scroll down, scroll down. OK, under this general section. OK, so here we are, have it. OK. Startup files here. So I just set up a little folder where I put my startup files. So just create yourself. There is a default one, but I, I like having my own one. So just create a folder on your on your C drive somewhere. OK, and then put your starter files in there. All right. All right. So what you should then do is copy all your lambdas into one file. You don't have to have them showing, they're just in the name manager. Um, I also like to do things like on the home tab, I set up some default cell styles and things like this, um, you know, other little bits and pieces that you like. So you can set up a template file and then you essentially save this as book.xltx, okay? 
into that folder that you set up. And then when you open up Excel, that page preloads. You basically got to make sure though that this splash screen that sometimes shows up, you got to disable that. So under options, um, where's the startup screen? It's always here somewhere. The startup options show the start screen. Yeah, you don't want that. So you just click open and your default template will load. Also, control N will cause your default template to load. However, file blank workbook doesn't cause your default template. So that's not the right option. Okay, a little side note. Feel free to skip this bit, but in terms of sort of making your formulas easier to read, the let function is really helpful. So rather than doing this if within this if, I'd actually like to break that out. And right at the start here, I am going to grab this little bit. Okay, I've copied that. I'm just going to say let. Okay, and I'm going to go, uh, this is going to be called the error val. Let me get rid of that bracket. Okay, let error val, comma, and then paste that bit of formula in. So the error val is going to be set to you know, whatever the answer is here, the alternative or that. So that's the sort of end of that little bit. So I'm going to put a little comma. And then right at the end, there's because I put the let in there, I need another little bracket. And then this bit, this bit becomes a lot simpler. Okay, so I don't need this whole chunk here. I just replace it with error val. Okay. So that let bit becomes its own little named element, and then it's used in here. Okay, there you go. A few tips. Hope you find it useful. Let me know what you think, and I'll catch you in the next video.